But let's consider the second thing. We go to the second point right now. And this is about the second most beautiful point, praying with your mate. Praying with your mate. Uh, by the way, how important is it to build a great marriage? Oh, so important. Every day in the papers we read about celebrities, right? Celebrities, every couple of weeks, they build these million dollar homes, they've got all the money in the world, but they cannot build a marriage. They have no idea how to build the most important thing to them. There was a man called, um, um, it wasn't Howard Hughes, but he was a billionaire, Paul Getty. In the 1950s, he was the number, the richest man in the world. This dad, a successful businessman, had no time for his children. Absolutely no time for the children. Everything was about business deals. He had no time for his wife. And when he grew up, he had five sons and two daughters. Every one of them rejected their father. And every one of them hated their father. Every one of them grew up, got married, and their marriages broke up they had no role model. And he says when he was dying, he said, in the months that he was dying, he said, oh, what a fool I have been. I spent my life getting all these billions of rupees, but I lost out on the most important thing that would bring me happiness. Paul Gietti said that. Now, I, I would say this, that Growing a, a wonderful home and having a happy marriage and raising up great children for the Lord is probably the most lasting, most wonderful legacy we can leave behind. And don't ever take it for granted. Don't think, oh, just, that's just my home. I can do whatever I want in my home. It's the most lasting legacy you and I will ever leave behind. So the second thing we, is beautiful, praying with you may. Billy Graham was once asked, a very simple thing. Somebody asked Billy Graham, who's married for 60 years. Ruth Graham just died six years ago. They were married for 62 years. Can you imagine 62 years? And Billy Graham was once asked this question. They, they, somebody asked him, uh, Billy, Billy, what is the most important piece of advice you can give us to keep Bill a good marriage? And Billy, Billy Graham said without hesitation, he said, oh, that's easy, he said, pray with your mate every day. Just pray with her. He said, Ruth and I have made a habit that every day we will pray together. He says, I cannot think of one thing in my life that has been more important, most satisfying in bringing us close than the simple habit of praying together. Now, I'll just tell you why praying is so important. And, and men and women, if you've never done that and you don't do that, I'm going to suggest that before the, after this message is over, the first thing you do, you make a commitment, you go home and you say, wife, I'm going to pray with you every day. Even if it's for 15 minutes every day, we're going to make a new commitment to pray together as a couple. Surveys have shown that less than 8% of all Christian couples pray at any, any time. They pray only in emergencies. Less than 3% of all Christian couples pray daily. But let me tell you why praying is so important, yeah? Let me tell you why praying is important. You see, God wants marriage to be a three-way, lifelong spiritual relationship between man, a woman, and God. We see the Garden of Eden. It says the Lord came and walked with them in the cool of the day, remember? And the man and the woman. So God never intended marriage to be a two-way two -way relationship. It's always three ways. And for some reason, God has made marriage so that we'll always need Him, just as we need Him as single people. And when we, when we pray together, when a man has a relationship with God, and a woman has a relationship with God, and we spend even the 15 minutes together praying and seeking God together as a couple, you know what happens? Here's me, here's my wife, and we're praying to the same Lord and asking Him, guess what's going to happen? We draw closer to each other. And there's a special blessing that comes, a special intimacy that comes, because we're going to the one who can meet our needs, who gave us a body, a soul, and a spirit. 
And many people have body, body oneness and they have soul oneness, relationship oneness, but they don't, they're not able to touch at the deepest level that God created, which is spiritual oneness. And we have a privilege as Christians to pray with our wives and get on our knees and pray with our wives. And you know what happens when we do? We experience a oneness that no one else can have. And this is why I tell young people, if you marry an unbeliever, let me ask you something. Who are you going to pray with? You want to pray to Jesus and she wants to pray. He wants to pray to Krishna. He wants to pray to somebody else, some idol God. Who are you going to pray with? And when your children are older, how are you going to teach them the faith of Jesus Christ? How can light walk with darkness? And when one day he wants to go out with his friends in the world, and you want to go out and be with the people in the church. The Bible says very clearly, how can two walk together unless we be agreed? And one of the most beautiful things we could ever do is to learn to pray together. In fact, the Bible gives us many promises about prayer. This is in Matthew chapter 19, verse 18, verse 9 and 20. Again, I say to you, Jesus said, that if two of you, two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them. My Father is in heaven, by my fathers in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. So when a couple prays, when two of them agree on any, about anything on this earth, about what they may ask the Lord, He promises that He will answer. What a beautiful thing. And if two or three, that's you bring your family members along, and there you are praying with them. He promises that God is there in the midst of them. The family that prays together, what? Stays together. Somebody made it up many years ago. The family that prays together stays together. So we want to get back into the very simple habit of building a great family. And showing our dependence on the Lord. Pray with your spouse. This next verse says, look at God's promise of prayer in Isaiah 65, 24. And it will also come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear them. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 12, God says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. An enemy can possibly overpower one who is alone. Two can resist him. But a cord of three strands is not easily torn. The third person is Jesus Christ. When God is in your marriage, or your marriage becomes really, really strong.